Hello and welcome. This is my project for a class. It is a documentary on a certain process. Uh, and the process I chose was creating the perfect steak. Uh, for the last, I don't know, I would say about six to eight months, I've been trying to get really good at cooking so that I lower my costs of living. And I really wanted to create a good steak. Um, I've done it twice before mainly uh, as dinners with my girlfriend. But now I wanted to really try and master that craft. And so in this documentary, I talk about what steak I get, uh, the ingredients, how to do it. And although there are a couple corrupted files, I voice over them with the knowledge that I learned and showed the process throughout. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks again for watching. And uh, let me know how, what you think of it in the end. Thank you. All right, so we are now at the store. And after doing some research, I have found that the best steak for pan searing would be the, the New York strip steak, mainly because it has a lot of flavor, partly because it has some fat, which can actually help with the flavor in the pan. So I'm at Whole Foods, and I guess the next clip will be after the grocery store when I have all the ingredients and I'm cooking. So, I'm probably gonna do some kind of carb on this side. Probably gonna get a couple potatoes, and then we will see from there how the process is to actually cook the steak. Welcome back. Uh, now we're actually gonna cook. I just got back from the grocery store, and I got some Whole Foods. I got a New York strip steak, and then I also have a little bit of olive oil. Organic thyme. Of course, butter. And then over here we have some organic fingerling potatoes as well to go along with the steak. That'll be good enough. And then we're gonna cut them lengthwise. Then we're gonna heat up the pan over here. And then over here, we're gonna put this one on, I would say about five to start off with. Just gonna let that warm up for a second. And then we're gonna move the potatoes over here. And then I'm gonna get another cutting board steak. We're going to take the steak and this recipe that I'm following, which I'll put over here, is by eating well. And what I learned from the recipe is mainly that I have to leave the steak out for about 30 minutes to room temperature to let it warm up so that it, when you put it in the actual pan, it's not super cold and it doesn't instantly crisp up. You don't want too tough of skin on the outside when you sear. So this one's a pretty good, pretty good uh, temperature, I would say. I've left it out for about 25 minutes. I'm not gonna, I don't know. It doesn't have to be too crazy. So the reason that the strip steak is the best for the pan is what I found out is because there's a long side of fat on the outside. And that's actually really good for the flavor when you're cooking it in the pan. We're gonna put a little bit of pepper. You don't want to put too much because the pepper can actually burn while it's cooking. Hello, sorry for cutting into the footage, but basically we ran into a problem where the footage was corrupted. So I thought what better way to do this other than play the bear trailer with some voiceover. So basically in this section, I talked about how I lightly buttered the pan for the potatoes. And after cutting them, I put them into the pan. I flipped them epically, like a real chef would. And then when we were talking about the steak, I basically talked about how you're supposed to salt it a good amount. And I talked about my struggles with cooking steak in the past. Uh, my main struggle has basically been just the fact that I cook the outside too quickly and then the inside isn't. So then it's hard to kind of gauge what the temperature would be in the inside. So it's important to lower the temperature and make sure that it's thoroughly cooked throughout and this will make it easier. And then the other thing I also said is that I learned a technique that you put the meat into the pan facing away from you so that the oil doesn't hit you. But sorry for the break. And yeah, back to the footage. All right, so we've finished a few of the potatoes. We're just gonna let them rest on the side. Uh, the rest are gonna cook for a second. Um, probably should just add like a sliver of butter. I would do oil normally with potatoes, but because I'm out of the butter, I mean out of the oil, like I said earlier, I'm gonna do a little more butter. This guy's just gonna 
crisp up. This guy's, it's a very thick steak. So we might have to do about four to five minutes on each side just to make sure because it is, I'd almost say almost two inches. One inch? One and a half? No clue. I'd say one and a half. Probably the safe answer. Hello, PostRem here again. For this corrupted file, I basically had footage about me talking basting, which I later have a description on the screen and, and talk about it more, so I'll leave that. Then the other part I talk about in this clip is just how the steak that I got was pretty thick, and so it was hard to gauge how long I should cook it. And I've found this the last two times I cooked steak is that it's hard when it's really thick to know when the inside's gonna be good. But as you can, as you watch, you'll, you'll see how it turns out. Then talk about flipping the steak, and there's a huge reveal of how it looks good after that. So yeah, but anyways, back to your normal footage. What's also happening in this process is that you have the juices that are coming off the steak going into the butter and then doing it all over again by putting the butter back on. And I'm also going to cook this side a little bit. I didn't say this in the recipe, but this side's a little bit, it's looking a little bit more raw, so I'm going to just put that in the butter right down there a little bit. Keep that cooking. So I, this thyme's a little bit burnt. I've always seen thyme with like steaks and stuff. I'm not sure, I've never really cooked with thyme too much, but it smells phenomenal. I mean, this stuff, I I couldn't find it anywhere until today. So, it's a sign that today is the day we made a steak with time. It is looking pretty, pretty fantastic, if I could say so myself. What I really like is I wish I could have one of those temperature thermometers so I could really check how well it's cooked. But overall, I think this is this is going pretty well. I'm gonna do another flip real quick. You can see that opposite side right there. That's looking fantastic. Beautiful. I'm gonna put a little more bleach ring on this side now. I'm gonna go for like maybe another two, two minutes on this side just to really make sure that's all cooked. <laughs> Like I said, I've had a couple of struggles with actually fully cooking the steak before, so we will probably go from there and see how it is. All right, so now we're back. I do believe that I have finally successfully cooked this steak. Hopefully it is a good cook and it's not too long. It was a little bit of a thick cut. Then it does say just leave it in, let it sit, or what they say in the kitchen, let, let it rest. If you cut into it really quickly, it's gonna be bloody and it's not gonna be the best presentationally. So we're gonna let that rest for about another five to six minutes and then we'll start getting ready to plate. Look at that bugger right there. Okay, so we're back from the resting, which is about five to six minutes. And now I'm gonna try and cut into this. Hopefully it's cooked, you know, hopefully, hopefully I did a decent job of cutting this. They also say to cut with the grain. So it would be going this way, slightly at a diagonal angle. We'll just see how that goes. It does feel nice. Oh, we got a little pink. Not too much pink. That's looking good. A little bit more of a medium to medium well. But I would have to say that's a pretty damn good cook right there. I think that's a pretty good stuff right there. So now we're gonna plate it. We got this amazing white plate to really bring out the color of the steak. I cut some of these nice pieces of steak. I'm actually gonna put the whole thing together just after we did that, just to present that nicely. You got, you got some potatoes going right here. Now, I should have thought of maybe making a sauce to go with this, or maybe something a little more green, but I really wanted this documentary to just be about cooking a steak. And so, that's our final product. I might put a little bit of salt and pepper on that, but we will do a taste test in a second, and I'll let you know how it is. As you might have guessed, I'm ready now to also taste this food. I'm gonna start with the potatoes. Now, these were just lightly seasoned, salt, pepper, thrown in some butter, nothing too crazy. It's a good potato, just classic. Now I'm gonna get, get this steak. Like I said, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but on this right side, you can see that 
piece of fat. Now, a lot of, most people don't like chewy fat. Now what you can do is just, that's what's great about strip steak, that's it, just cut that one side off. There's no guesswork, just that one side, no more fat, you're done with fat. I'm gonna cut in there, looks pretty good. A little overcooked, but that's okay. You know, working on it. That's a good fucking steak, that's really good. Last final thoughts I would like to say, I'm, I would give it about, for, for being like my third time cooking steak, I would say it's about a seven out of 10. Thank you for watching and I'm glad that you were here too.